Hi, I'm Luann Helms, a psychologist in Utah State University um, Counseling and Psychological Services. Welcome to the Stress Management and Wellness Workshop. This workshop consists of six different parts. The first part will be discussing stress and different ways to manage it. Parts two, three, and four will be practicing a wide variety of relaxation skills. In part five, I will share with you cognitive, behavioral, and emotional skills. And then in part six, we will develop a wellness plan together. So what are some things that stress you out? Tests. Test. Test. Balancing school and family. Balancing school and family. I was just going to say pretty much the same thing. Balancing school, balancing work, running out of money. Also dating and balancing school is rough <laughs> yeah. stuff for me. So balancing different demands, maybe the dating and different relationships. So giving presentations might be something to stress someone out. So one of the things with stress management is knowing what your sources of stress are for you as an individual, so not compared to other people. You know, if you can own what your stresses are, then you can be more prepared for them and you can know to practice skills to get your stress level down before those different events in your life. So not thinking about, well, this shouldn't stress me out because it doesn't seem to stress them out, focusing on this is my personal stressor. And there are a variety of different sources of stress. And so you might look up here and notice a few different things that come to mind. Um, so in addition to school and some of the different demands, there's different environmental stressors. We also have interpersonal stressors, um, physiological stressors, and then one thing that some people don't think about is intrapersonal stressors. So interpersonal stressors are stress between people and intrapersonal stressors are factors within us that create more stress. So as you glance at this, and you don't have to say which ones, can you maybe think of, do some of these things uh, relate to some of these? Okay. So, and this is just a small list. The nice thing about the interpersonal stressors is these are ways of um, thinking that are mostly learned, and so you can unlearn them. Okay. So in addition to knowing what your sources are, you also want to know, you know, how do you know you're stressed? How do you know you're getting there? So what are some of your symptoms of stress? I get really snappy, like with my roommate or with my friends, like okay. don't have a very long fuse. Okay, so being really short and snappy. Yeah. Okay. I start feeling overwhelmed with little things as well, so things that normally don't stress me out start stressing me out. Okay. So kind of things on your plate kind of uh, cause you more stress than they do normally. Yeah. Okay, build up. And I have a tendency to miss those little things entirely, just I don't remember to do them because I'm focused on the big things that i got to get done. Okay. So some things uh, you forget about. Tom. Now, I, I know I'm stressed when I start participating in avoidant behavior like playing video games or watching movies or sleeping in. Just I can tell that I'm avoiding important things that I need to do because I'm stressed out about it. Yeah. So there are kind of a lot of different behavioral symptoms that people have shared. For me, I often get headaches when I'm stressed out. Um, I get like pain in my neck or in my back. Okay. Like that's where I kind of carry tension, I think. So some back pain, mm -hmm. other physical symptoms. I might cry easier. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Things will just get to me more emotionally. Yeah. yeah. So knowing how our um, maybe body and our behavior and our emotions tell us that we're stressed out. So kind of knowing that we're getting there. So if this is, um, the list could be like 10 times longer than this, but here are some common things. Are there any that you kind of go, oh yeah, that's me too. Oh, what might be a few that you're like, oh, okay. I get really accident prone, like I'll stub my toe or hit my knee on something and just be really absent minded, I think, when I'm stressed out or have a lot to do. Yeah. So we might be thinking about all the stuff we have to do and not pay attention and walk into things. Or... Yeah. I have problems sleeping. Okay. So sleep difficulties. Yeah. I procrastinate yeah. quite a bit. I yeah. think that, hey, if I don't do it now, I'm okay now, but it just builds up the stress. Yeah. So with a lot of the behavioral stuff, anything with some of the physical things? 
Yeah, I think the tr like the trouble concentrating one is uh, I'll think about a million things at once, or I, w I won't be able to hold my attention as much as I normally would. Okay. Yeah. Sure. yeah. I, so, I eat. Eating. Yeah. Yeah. So stomach issues are sometimes common when we have stress problems. Sometimes people eat more and sometimes people don't feel hungry at all. Yeah. So um, part of our symptoms are related to the fight or flight response. And I won't go into a lot of details, but basically our body is wired to protect it from danger. So it's a protective mechanism that if I'm out on a hike and I see a mountain lion, the fight or flight response gets triggered and my body prepares to fight or flee the situation. And so the blood goes to major muscle groups and out of our extremities and that's why when people are stressed sometimes their hands and feet are cold. So our breathing gets really shallow and um, our pupils dilate. All these different chemicals are uh, being released to prepare us to fight or flee. The muscles get tense and when that happens, um, digestion slows because who cares about digesting your food if you're about to get it attacked by a lion? You know, so that's why sometimes people have stomach problems. Probably why I get headaches is because you get muscle tension. Okay. And another thing that happens is um, our immune system is suppressed because who cares about fighting off our germs if I'm about to get attacked by a lion? And so sometimes people are stressed and then they get sick. So. It also has a challenge with our memory. If I'm about to get attacked by a lion, who cares if I can recall the names of the presidents? So, so one thing is just knowing that that's a natural response to protect us from danger. Fortunately, we're hardly ever in physical danger. Occasionally, things happen where we are. But the fight or flight response actually gets triggered over and over again throughout our day in our society, even though we're not about to get attacked by lions. So is that like when I'm going in to take a test and my mind just completely goes blank? Is yes. that like yeah. what's happening, even if I've studied a lot? Yeah. So it makes it hard to recall the information that you want to recall. So that's a good example, too. The test isn't going to kill you. Uh. So it might feel like that, and maybe you're having thoughts like, I can't do this, um, thoughts that I'm in jeopardy. And so a lot of times we're not actually being attacked by the lion, but our thoughts are triggering the fight or flight response. And then there's things outside of us that are trying to trigger it. Like the news tries to trigger it. You know, it says things like uh, something in your house can kill you. Find out at 11 what it is. You know, so outside of us, we're always getting these messages to watch out. And the challenge with that is we need to work on um, the fight or flight is constantly being triggered with our thoughts and with external stimulus. We have to work on triggering the relaxation response because people aren't walking around telling us, relax. So we have to tell ourselves, and we have to work on triggering that relaxation response and calming that down a little bit. Okay. Because the chronic fight or flight can really wear us out. Sorry. Can I ask you something real quick? So is it, I mean, it sounds like it's kind of the same thing that happens when you get up to perform. If you mm -hmm. get performance anxiety, yeah. and you get really nervous, it's the same thing? Yep. OK. So same example. Sounds like it. So, okay. yeah. so if I'm up here and I'm getting nervous and I'm thinking, I can't do this, or what if I make a mistake, then that flight or flight's going to get triggered a little bit. And the challenge with it, too, is that it wears us out. And a lot of times when it comes to stress management, people think, well, I don't have time for stress management. I don't have time to take care of myself. Or I don't have time to maybe take a 10-minute break. So, but the thing to remember is if you don't take time for stress management, it'll cost you more time in the long run. So if you don't take time and you go, 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 and then you crash because you've gotten sick, because you haven't taken time for stress management and you've worn out your immune system, you know, has anyone ever been sick for finals? Yeah. So that's one issue. You know, sometimes, too, people will be anxious and they'll study and study, and in four hours, they're all anxious trying to study. Well, if they would have took a half an hour for some stress management, and then studied for two hours, they might have retained more information. And so it makes us not think so straight. And then another huge issue is sometimes when we're stressed out, we have a short fuse. And we behave in ways that we regret. 
We say things we wish we didn't. We do things that we wish we didn't. And that takes a lot of time to feel guilty about that, to think about that, to try to repair it. So that does take a lot of time in our life. And so if we take more time just for taking good care of ourselves and keeping our stress at a manageable level, we will save time in the long run. But you have to really be invested into doing this. And with the fight or flight, I mean, it's meant to protect ourselves. So having some stress can be a helpful thing. It's just having too much too often that we have to manage. We don't want to not have stress. We don't want to not have anxiety sometimes. But we do want to have it at a level that we can manage. So one of the skills is we want to be able to rate our stress level. So using the sources of stress and symptoms of stress, knowing where you're at at any given moment on a scale of 1 to 10. So 10 being you're most stressed out and 1 being very calm. So right now in this moment since I'm presenting, and that's one of my sources of stress, I'd say I'm about a 7. That's pretty high for me. So if you don't mind maybe giving yourself a number in this moment between 1 and 10. 6. 6. Probably like a 4. Okay. About a five. Okay. Probably about a three. Okay. So knowing that there's variability and not comparing yourself to other people, checking in with yourself and rating that. Now, most of the time people think, you know, I was just going along and the stressor happened, whatever that is, let's say a test, and boom, my stress went up. But really what typically happens is maybe I had a really cruddy breakfast and I didn't get a good night's sleep, and my roommate said something I wish they didn't, and I thought about the test, and I thought, I'm going to blow it, and then the test happens, and you don't have very far to go. So the skill of knowing where you're at at any given moment, and then having techniques to just bring it down a notch or two. And having a variety. So there isn't one thing that you use that, that takes you from a nine to a two, just keeping your fuse as long as possible so you're less likely to get to an 8, 9, or 10. And an 8, 9, or 10, for some people, that's a panic attack, or maybe you you're, can't believe the words that are coming out of your mouth because you're so stressed out, or maybe you freeze. You can't think straight. So knowing where you're at at any given moment. So what are some of the things that you do to decrease your stress level, to bring it down a notch or two? Um, I like to play the piano, take a break to go play the piano. That's something that I love. Or just listen to music. Yeah. Um, I have a list on my iPod. It's like a relaxation list that that's, I'll use. Yeah, that's a great idea. Out. So using music, we can um, have playlists to help us feel confident or relaxed, mm -hmm. um, an empowerment list. So making a playlist of different songs that will trigger the mood that you want more of. Yeah. And then playing music, too, is a great activity. Other ways that people? I'll go on a run and just exercise and try and get out and just let it go away. Yeah. So running. Why, why would running be helpful when it comes to the fight or flight response? Well, wouldn't it like get rid of it physically? If you're having a physical reaction to it, then you could do something physical maybe to, to try to get rid of it or help it. Yeah. So one of the reasons that exercise is so helpful for um, anxiety and stress is fight or flight prepares us to do something physical and when we exercise we're actually taking that system to fruition. So in addition to all the great benefits of exercise in helping to build confidence, in helping to manage anxiety and depression, it's good for our body and fight or flight is kind of wearing out our body. Um, doing some exercise helps us to bring that to fruition having some physical activity. And that doesn't, um, you know, maybe you can't go for a long run and right before presentation, maybe doing a few push-ups or some squats or something to get that energy out sometimes is really helpful. Uh, other things that people do? I think another thing that a lot of people do is just talk to someone, talk to a friend. Yeah. That's something you can do maybe like right before presentation or something. You can call a friend and be like, hey, a little nervous, let's just talk for a little bit. Yeah. Um, I do that sometimes. Yeah. So having a good so support system is really important. 
um, having maybe a variety of people to talk to, and knowing in your support system that you might have different people for different things. Like my friend Jack might be a great person for me to vent to, um, but my friend maybe Jill might be good for a different perspective. Yeah. So, and knowing, or this other friend might be great for just going to a movie you're having fun with and taking a break from the things that are stressing me out. And so trying to have a support system where you do have a variety of people to turn to and, and don't expect people to be really what they're not. So if I have a friend that, you know, every time I call wants to cheer me up by telling jokes and I really need a shoulder to cry on, maybe that's not the best person to call. And so kind of figuring out what I need when it comes to support systems. So, and support systems and maintenance of them are pretty challenging at times. Um, but working on having healthy relationships and healthy communication with my support system. So, yeah. Other things? I like to sleep. It's like okay. Sometimes if I'm really feeling stressed, I go to bed, I wake up feeling a lot better. I don't know if that's good or bad, but yeah. that's what I do. Yeah. So um, not thinking about it good or bad, but maybe observing it a little bit as far as does this help me? Is it effective? And it may be that you're not getting enough sleep and you actually do need more sleep, and so it would be effective. Or if you're just avoiding, because sometimes if we avoid too much, we don't work through those feelings and we end up causing more stress. So in some situations, it could be a good technique, and in other situations, maybe not so helpful. Yeah. Yeah, like I'll watch a movie or TV show or something with friends, and sometimes I feel like not as stressed afterwards, but other times I feel more stressed yeah. later on. So I don't know, kind of same thing, if that's yeah. helpful so or not. Paying attention, yeah. I mean, movies are often like music too, that they could trigger a different mood. And so you deciding what kind of mood you want to trigger. You know? So when it comes to stress management, a great technique is humor. And so if there is a, a movie that makes you laugh or cheers you up and gives you a break in that way, but if you're already feeling really down, maybe you don't want to watch Old Yeller and stay there or something. So paying attention to that, how those movies make you feel. And you might even have, as part of your toolbox of stress management things, certain movies that you pull out every once in a while that maybe make you feel relaxed or empowered or hopeful. So, any other things that people do? I've got something else. When it's my workload that's stressing me out and I feel like I have too much on my plate, um, writing it down, writing down what I need to do, either making a to-do list or getting it on my calendar helps me feel like I've gotten something done and then it helps me um, organize it so that I can tackle it. Because if, it, if I just have it all piled up, then sometimes it just feels too overwhelming to actually start it. But I know that once I start it, I can definitely do it. So as long as I just you know, write it down, figure out what I need to do first, then that helps me feel just a little bit less stress. Yeah. So writing a list, prioritizing, crossing things off, yeah. <laughs> you know, and being able to kind of chunk it down because sometimes we feel overwhelmed when we're thinking about all of it. And if we can chunk it down and say, okay, what's first? And what piece can I do? And taking care of it one piece at a time. So, so there is a wide variety of things that we can do in um, thinking about maybe time in nature. Um, does anyone use meditation or yoga or know people that do some? So, um, in the counseling center we have uh, animals because petting pets and being around pets or watching children play, there's a variety of things that sometimes can be helpful. So, so we've, we've talked about knowing what your sources and symptoms are, being able to rate your stress level, and then figuring out for yourself what are a variety of things to bring it down a notch or two? So what I would encourage you to do is to make a list, kind of spy on yourself and observe the things that kind of bring it down and then figure out how you sprinkle more of that into your life. And in parts two, three, and four, we'll practice some relaxation skills. Thank you. <laughs>